Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. So it's been a really long day. I've been working on a lot of stuff and uh, I wanted to prepare something 3D related, but unfortunately I'm running out of time for today. So we'll continue tomorrow again. Uh, I'll, I'll show you a couple of nice tricks inside of Amaya about rendering. There was one really cool thing about rendering that I want to explore, which has to do with how light passes through thin objects. So stay tuned for that one tomorrow. But um, before you leave, there were a couple of really important news on the industry. So as you guys uh, might have noticed, uh, hopefully you're not living under a rock, uh, the ZBrush Summit was uh, happening uh, all this last couple of days, and there were a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, the, the replay for the newest one is not up yet, but it, like guys, seriously, I strongly recommend you go back. There's like 10 hours, 15 hours, or like 10 hours each day of content about all of the different things and the approaches that they use for um, all sorts of projects. All of the talks are really, really interesting. There's uh, talks about like toy manufacturing, games, film, 3D printing, so, so much stuff. Like look at this amazing things. So this is one of the best uh, things that you can do as an artist to, to keep learning. Um, learning from a lot of people is always really, really important because you get to know how they do their stuff. Now, uh, the video is not up yet, but the, or today, um, at, uh, earlier today, they had the, um, what's the word? They had the, um, the presentation of the newest ZBrush and, the again, the, the video doesn't seem to be here. There we go. It is here. So I'm just going to go through some of the things that they showed. It was like a one hour presentation. Um, really, really interesting things. I don't think they showed as many like cool things about, um, what's the word about, the um, the, the sculpting process. It was more about uh, some, uh, integration with a uh, Maxon with Cinema 4D. So this was the first one and it's interesting. I'm not going to be using it as much because I don't use Cinema 4D, but there's new plugins that you can use to sculpt something in ZBrush, bring it um, pretty much immediately to Cinema 4D, and then uh, bring it into Unreal for production and stuff. So it's it's an interesting feature. If you're a Cinema 4D user, it's definitely useful for you. This was the first like interesting thing that they showed, which is the new Siri measure. They are improving the algorithm for the Siri measures to, to get better results. But not only that, they're adding a couple of I would say interesting features. Uh, I was not super excited about this ones, to be honest, because even though it is cool, it's not necessary, uh, if you know what I mean. So they added this a retry button. So the way this works, uh, and they explain it here, you're of course welcome to go and check it, is you see remesh, and if you don't like the result, you change the poly count or the polygon count that you want to go for, and you just hit retry. So this is pretty much saving you from going with a control C, like on doing the zero measure and then trying something else. You just retry it with a different poly count and you're going to be able to compare both of them a little bit easier. Uh, again, from a user standpoint, I think it's a, it's a handy thing to have because it doesn't have to recalculate. They do mention that the mesh is safe somewhere else. So you get like faster calculations that way. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, as you can see, all the way up here, it says 2023 beta 3. Uh, this is probably going to be the the, the release uh, product that they're going to have in the next couple of months. I don't think they announced pricing or uh, subscription things uh, yet, but if you guys heard it on the live stream, let me know in the comments because I'm curious about uh, whether or not this is going to be a paid subscription or, subscription or not, which I'm, it's probably going to be. So that was the first thing. Uh, Siri Measure now uh, keeps polypaint, which is pretty cool if you like to use a polypaint for concept and stuff like that inside of, um, inside of ZBrush. That was really, really nice. Uh, and this thing is really cool. So this thing is a new masking like algorithm or thing that they're using where you can uh, like uh, paint a specific area. Let me show you here. So you paint a specific area and then instead of having to go manually and fill it in, it fills it on uh, automatically. It's like a paint bucket, right? But for, for masking. So uh, apparently it's going to be uh, down here on the, on the masking menu. And it's one of uh, it's really interesting. They showed a couple of um, of examples. There you go. Like they create a couple of shapes and then go here to analyze region or all region. Both of them work in slightly different ways. And then you get a a complex mask that will be really time consuming to do by yourself. It was not impossible to do it, but it was really time consuming. So I think this is going to be a really really helpful tool uh, in the upcoming release. Um, this is another one where you can like 
kind of like tell the program where you want things to be filled in. Again, it's like like the little paint bucket instead of a paint or seabrush. So super, super helpful. Uh, then they move on to this. This is the big thing that they're going to be releasing on the next patch. And I am going to say I am quite excited about it. However, I was reading some comments on the chat that were like, uh, this is... This is going to be pricey. <laughs> so they have added a redshift into um, into Seabridge. You can see right here it says redshift renderer. And that uh, you can use redshift's technology, because redshift is part of Maxon, to render things inside of Seabridge and get a more BPR, like physically correct render, similar to what you would get from Arnold. You get HDRIs, you get global illumination, you get caustics, you get reflections, you get emissive maps, like, well, not maps, emissive textures um, or materials. So it's interesting. Again, it's not something that I think I personally am going to be using as much because I normally follow the full production until we go into Maya and stuff. But this is going to be really handy. I, I think for for uh, pre biz and for pre production, where when you want to like get an idea of how things are going to look, this is going to be really really important. And you can see them here uh, playing around with some of the settings and changing things around. Here's where they go and and create like an emissive map. There we go. So yeah, I mean, being able to create this very cool looking render inside of ZBrush um, is going to be quite, quite nice. Uh, again, they did mention in the comments that if you are not subscribed uh, to Maxon One or to Redshift, you are going to be restricted to only using Redshift uh, CPU which is not as fast, of course, as Redshift uh, GPU. They were using Redshift GPU for this one. That's why the renders were quite fast. So, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, we'll have to see, right? Like, Because I don't think it's official, but uh, we'll have to see. Hopefully, they do include it as part of the some sort of like uh, upgrade package or something. Like, I, It's pretty obvious that they're going to be charging one more time for anyone that's a user. But again, we'll have to see. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Oh, this one. This one's really cool. Surf surface scattering inside of uh, inside of um, inside of servers. This is really really helpful. I think this is going to be a big one because surf surface scattering is one of those things that people really struggle with, especially tweaking it and and modifying it inside of Arnold or other softwares. So being able to just like literally increase how much scale amount and the scale of the SSS over here and just get a nice render like this, it's going to be a big thing. Now, think um, or, or take into account that this uh, tools that they're showing right now, they don't have any poly paint. So if you add poly paint to these things, it's going to be even better, right? So it's going to look a little bit more like a realistic skin. Again, it's probably not going to be production ready because you're still going to have to set up your materials in other softwares for final shots and stuff like that. But from, but from a previous uh, like perspective, I think it's going to be really, really powerful. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. They did show a couple of other things here. Oh, this one was interesting. Hopefully we don't get a, a striker here because uh, it's showing a, a female anatomy. But um, this one was really interesting because with the redshift thing, one thing that you can do is you can bake the light of the object. That this is really interesting for virtual reality and for um, like uh, augmented reality, where you can't really have like uh, amazing looking shaders. You could bake the material and the shader into poly paint. So as you can see, this is um, this is with like no poly paint, and then. A couple of seconds later, they use this Redshift Baker, and it takes like pictures from everywhere and just bakes the light information. Really, really powerful. Really nice because, uh, again, if you're doing some sort of like AR thing and you already know what the light setup is going to be, you can save a lot of performance by just baking all of the light into the object, like directly into the poly paint. And if the, the object has a texture map, you can just like transfer that poly paint into a texture map. So overall, I would give it like a like an eight uh, in regards to uh, how like surprised I was with that to or this year's uh, general thing. Let me know in the comments what's your opinion. If you've been a ZBrush user for long, uh, do you think these tools are gonna be uh, like? Do you think these tools uh, are worth of a like complete huge improvement or are they more like a small patch? What do you guys think? It's it's always fun to read the comments. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and continue with some other works that I need to finish, but I'll see you back tomorrow for more uh, 3D content. I, I promise, I promise, tomorrow we'll have more 3D. Uh, this weekend, I'll see if I can do a live, uh, a live stream so that we can have some fun as well. So thank you very much, guys. And don't forget, the best way you can support us is, of course, by liking, sharing, subscribing, and checking our premium courses down here. Thank you very much, guys. See you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.